When the clarinetist blows into the instrument, a reed in the mouthpiece vibrates, creating sound. To turn that basic sound into different notes, the player manipulates the length of the air column inside the instrument by opening and closing different tone holes. The standard clarinet has 24 tone holes. The musician covers some with his fingers, the rest by pressing keys. Those keys are made of nickel silver or sometimes brass. They inject hot wax into a plaster mold of a specific key. Then, using hot wax, they attach several models of the same key onto a stem. They put this tree, as it's called, into a cylinder, then into a mold-making machine, which fills the space around the tree with a silica-based ceramic material. When the ceramic hardens, they melt out the wax through an exit hole at the bottom, leaving behind a tree-shaped cavity. Now, they transfer the mold to a casting machine and load nickel silver into a miniature furnace. The metal melts and fills the entire cavity. To cool and solidify the casting, they submerge the mold in lukewarm water. The metal contracts as its temperature drops, loosening from the mold. They extract the tree and remove the keys. Then they grind off the little stub left on each key. Next, the keys go into a tumbler filled with synthetic stones. The stones polish the keys, preparing their surface for silver plating. Silver doesn't adhere directly to nickel silver, so they plate the keys in copper first. For each layer, they submerge the keys in a chemical solution, then apply a negative electric charge while running a positive charge to pieces of the plating metal. Like a magnet, this draws particles of the plating metal onto the keys, forming a thin overall coat. A clarinet's two-part body is typically made of wood or, like these, plastic resin. A computer-guided drill bores 24 tone holes and 40 smaller holes for the posts, which support the key mechanisms. A sonic welding machine presses each post into its respective hole while zapping it with a high-frequency sound wave to melt the plastic around the base. This anchors the post securely. The next machine reams a hole through the head of each post for the rods that operate the keys. They wrap natural cork around the connecting ends of the body, then illuminate the interior for a quality control inspection. It's time for the final assembly. They lubricate all the moving parts, then install the 17 keys onto their mechanisms. Each key has a foam pad to prevent air from leaking out when the hole's covered. They use a strip of foil to test whether the seal is tight enough. With both body sections of the instrument finished, a musician assembles them and checks that each and every key moves fluidly. Then, after attaching the bell in the mouthpiece, she conducts a sound quality test, performing a set of musical exercises. The clarinet now goes to the packing department where the packager gently removes fingerprints, lint, and lubricant residue, then lays the instrument parts in a velvet-lined case. It's a fitting finale to the making of an instrument that looks as good as it sounds.